Hello and welcome to today's webcast, transforming your customers into your most effective marketing channel. My name is Sarah Gonzalez, I'm an employee of Redback Conferencing and I'll be your host for today's session. Before we get into it, I just want to give you guys some understanding of how to interact with the platform that you're viewing on today. If you wish to ask a question, simply click on the ask a question icon which is located at the bottom of your screen. You've also got some resources there and we encourage you to complete the survey at the end of the session or before you have to leave by clicking on the survey tab. And just to note that today's recording of the session will be sent out within 48 hours of today. So today we're joined by Mark Halper. Mark is the founder of Rec Amazing, which does sound amazing. How are you today, Mark? Very well, thank you, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Great. So today we're going to be talking about transforming your customers, the marketing channels available, and also advocacy, which is mm -hmm. huge in what you do at the moment. So can you tell us a little bit about your background? Absolutely. Um, so I've been really fortunate to work in um, some really innovative places. Uh, I've really tried to work in infancy stages yep. of businesses. So um, everything from creating um, Australia's largest student databases to helping create some of Australia's first digital agencies. Mm -hmm. So been really fortunate enough to work on the rollout of mobile marketing, the first social pages, um, a lot of firsts, yep. um, which has seen me just be able to understand from global clients what really their needs are and yeah. where the market's going. And you've been doing this for over 13 years, so you've mm -hmm. obviously seen a lot of different marketing strategies and angles and advocacy. Why do you find that the most important? Um, it's been interesting. I think over the last decade we've seen a real shift yep. um, from brands really looking at the, their own opinions mm -hmm. as being the most important, their own messages being the most important to, to kind of going actually uh, what the customer tells yeah. uh, other people is, is what's most important and, and is a true reflection. Yep. Um, so what we've seen as a result of that and uh, on the slide now I've just got a few comments around that um, just to showcase how much brands are really taking mm. notice of it. So Net Promoter Score which for anyone that doesn't know is essentially brands um, all around the world use it as a measuring tool. So it's a question that goes out to the customers saying how likely are you to recommend us based on your experience today. Uh, people rate from 0 to 10 and you'll notice that everywhere now that I've said that. Yes. Um, and people who give 8 to 10 are, are seen as promoters. Yep. Um, and the research says these people are really valuable, they buy more, buy mm. more often, a higher average way to purchase and CEOs basically use this as a metric to check on the performance of the business yep. and marketing teams grow incentivized. So the, the likelihood of someone to recommend is now one of the most important metrics equal to revenue in a business. Yep. Um, we also see social proof. So people are saying, okay, we have our own advertising, we have our own media, media channels and the traditional ones of TV, radio and print, but really we know what converts better mm. is social proof. When you see that your friend has actually been involved or commented or it says that they like a business, you know, the average ad on Facebook where it's just an ad compared to where you'll see your mm. friends like it has a much higher click through and that, that's because of social proof. We know that if there's already a human relationship there, it converts better. Um, the other thing we see is a move towards advocacy around influencers. Um, so we know these people have great channels. When we used to use influencers, our own marketing for clients, we saw a much higher click through um, and conversion when, than our traditional ads or PR. Um, but the interesting bit is that um, my clients used to always say, okay, we know we have advocates out there, we know they're recommending us to friends, we can track, they've said they've come in through a friend referral, but we have no way of knowing when yeah. that happened or who it happened by or, or how influential that person was and who else they told. So uh, I, I found that a really interesting space. Yeah, definitely. So um, what is an advocate with all that in mind? And if I do stumble on the word advocate, don't be like, it's one of those <laughs> words that I always stumble with and I have to say it at least 20 times in today's session. So what is an advocate? How would you describe one? And why are they so valuable to business more now than ever? Sure. Well, um, an important distinction, uh, which is up on the slide now, yeah. is um, uh, instead of loyalist, people often think an advocate is a loyalist, so mm. someone who frequently purchases from my business. And that, that might be, if you're a charity, might be someone who frequently donates. Um, and you might be able to track that if they're buying your product online. I can see this person buys my product every week. Fantastic. They're a loyalist. The difference between an advocate and a loyalist is, yes, they purchase often, and yes, they're often, more often than not, advocates are loyalists. But an advocate is actually out there recommending your brand to others. They're, they are literally your most effective marketing mm. channel. They're the most trusted of any marketing message you, you have. Uh, and they're out there without incentive trying to convert others to your brand. 
So that's an advocate. Mm. Okay. And how does a business actually know when they've created an advocate? We talk about word of mouth and how hard it is to actually understand what people are saying. So if that's hard, how hard must it be to even know who the advocates are? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's really interesting. We There's a lot of overarching research done yeah. uh, on advocates and from people who... Uh, we, when we when people are asked, uh, do you advocate a brand? Do you recommend mm. a brand? You kind of get that research, and some some brands do it well, but more often than not, and the majority of businesses find it incredibly difficult to track. So, the research shows that advocates account for around five to ten percent yep. of all our customers, um, and also what shows from a value point of view is that they're five times more valuable than yes. the average customer themselves. So. Where someone is seen to be an advocate and puts their hands up to an advocate, where the, the lifetime analysis of their value mm -hmm. has been seen, they're actually five times more value, so they purchase more from your business. But not only that, they're actually out there recommending others to your business. Uh, okay. And those referred customers, uh, a study was done across 10,000 bank accounts which saw how much value a referred customer brings into the business. Um, and as a result, they saw referred customers have a 16% higher customer lifetime value themselves. Wow. So not only are advocates buying more, buying more mm. often from you, but the people that are actually coming in that they've referred are actually more valuable as well because they come in with a guard down. They go, well, if my friend has actually recommended you, mm. I, I trust you, I won't kick your tires, I'm, I'm happy to go and, and purchase things yep. from you and purchase more of your portfolio. Uh, and what we see as a result is from a marketing sense that it drives, if you, if you can use marketing and customer experience to drive advocacy, it actually converts and, and value is twice the amount of paid advertising. And social media has really changed the game here as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we know that 81% of consumers are influenced by friends' social media posts. So mm -hmm. the more you connect advocates with your social media, uh, the better. Great. So as a marketer, I know how frustrating it is when it comes to trying to attribute things to things and channels and everything like that. And like you said, it's just getting harder and harder. You've got mm. leads coming from everywhere these days. Um, and I know the power of word of mouth as well. So how, how does it all work? If I, how do I actually find out what people are saying about my brand? You know, what, what steps that can I take to actually make these advocates but also understand what's being said and how, how can I even track all that information that's coming through? Yeah, it's, um, it's incredibly difficult. Mm. <laughs> so as you said, it, you, you, you have a sense and you probably meet customers yeah. and say, oh, I've told my friends about how you, do you it's measure great. It? <laughs> uh, but how's it, how's it actually happen? Yeah. So we, we know that businesses um, like yourself understand that word of mouth is really powerful. Mm. And, and drives more conversion than any message, but the tracking of it and the measuring of it is is incredibly difficult. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we, we we have that exact challenge. It was in our briefs that we mm. used to get from clients. We weren't able to do it. Yeah. Um, so what's happened as well is that when typically we, we thought we were going to be able to use social to do it. So yeah. you know, when we started some Australia's first Facebook page, we was like, okay, fantastic, great. Yeah. We've got this group of people who are who love our brand, who are advocates, who we can nurture and engage and get all these insights to and really learn and, and build and grow. Uh, and what ended up happening, of course, is that we kind of muddied the water ourselves. We mm. used it as a lead channel. We brought other people in. We did um, like us to win apps and promotions, mm. which brought which I'm sure a lot of people have done before, um, which brought all these different people in from different areas. And, and to be honest, they may not have had any intention ever mm. of uh, even using your business or yeah. being a customer. So it became um, something which we all hoped um, was for advocates, but then obviously uh, Facebook has to make money. Um, yeah. They changed their kind of algorithm. It's become a pay-to-play station. And it's very difficult now to be mm. able to track or engage or understand that value. So... What ends up happening is the only way to know how to create advocates um, is around the customer experience. Mm. Okay, so what about referral campaigns then? Yep. How does that play into all this? Because I know that I've worked in businesses before where there's a referral campaign and it's like, okay, if you refer this many people, you get this as a gift. Or if you refer this many people, you get this off your next bill or something like that. What's, aren't they advocates? Yeah, Yes and no. Okay. Um, so it, it is a different. It is a different kind of marketing. Yep. So absolutely, referral marketing exists, yep. and, and it's very widely common. Um, it's widely practiced. Um, so as exactly as you said, re refer this and receive. Mm. Um, what's really interesting though is the stats where the research has been done, where you've asked, where they've gone out and asked people, do you recommend a brand? And the universe of the answer is yes. So yep. of all the people who say yes, there are advocates. 
they then ask, okay, why do you recommend the brand? Mm. What, what are those reasons why you recommend the brand? And interestingly, because it, I think it, it it's very different to what you do expect, yeah, yeah. it's very different to referral marketing is that the customer experience. So I know if I'm going to recommend a brand to a friend, I really need to trust that that business mm. is going to deliver a good experience for that friend. And if I don't, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to refer mm. you. So what we see is certainly uh, the incentive side. You're probably going to get a little bit of a spike, but yeah. what we always say and best practice is always if you if you have to incentivize a referral, um, it's a really short-term tactic. You mm. are far better focusing on the customer experience and delivering a great customer experience to generate true advocacy because in the long term your business will be far more cost efficient for it. Mm. You won't have to rely on incentives. And interestingly, when advocates are asked how, how incentives actually work for, for them, um, referrals, only 1% said that's why they recommend. So speaking to this graph now, why mm. do, what are the other reasons that people recommend and what drives that? So how can I, how can I as an organisation try and make this beneficial for me? Yeah, so uh, the customer experience is by far number one and mm. what we've seen is a real shift in that space too. Yeah. So, so brands really, and that's why they measure the likely to recommend, they look at, okay, how do we deliver a good enough customer experience to drive that advocacy? And, that, and that's the real truth point. You know, mm. it's, not our, it's not our messages, it's not kind of trying to say things that maybe we don't deliver on. Yeah. It's, it is only true when the advocate has that good experience and recommends to their friend, it's a really good measure. Yeah. So the focus should be on um, being, being human, being empathetic, mm. really understanding your customers, understanding what they want and delivering that for them. Um, and if you do make a mistake, you know, make up for it, be human in that and apologise and, and, and use that as a, as a good service turnaround point. The other th reason why people recommend is, is helping others. Mm. Um, so what was really interesting, uh, we did uh, focus groups around why people use uh, review sites compared mm. to when they were to mouth in friends. We said, okay, who's used a review site? And everyone put up their hand, usually yeah. a trip advisor, and we said, okay, who, who's left a review? And all the hands went down. We're like, okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. You, you know the value of the review site, but you're not really participating yourself. And then we followed on and said, okay, who has actually went on and actually told their friends about the experience? Mm. Um, and all the hand, all hands went back up. I said, okay, why is that? Oh, well, I want to help my friends. Yeah. You know, there is an inherent need for us to want to help our friends. You know, we know that uh, we live with them. You know, they, they help us and that's the relationship mm. we have. So um, being able to ask the recommendations and that's what our platform kind of focuses on is the ability to store it for your friends mm. to enjoy as well. Um, and then there's, there's the social kudos as well that people get and I have a feeling that whilst this is measured as 3% it's probably a lot higher. Yeah. I think people like to feel they're knowledgeable. People they just like, don't want to admit it. <laughs> exactly. Um, people like to go, I, I knew about this business before you oh, yeah. and aren't I great? And this is, but it's important, you know, it's a part of people's own brand persona that mm. they feel, you know, I'm, I'm involved in tech so I know about all the tech businesses, mm. I'm going to let you you know and, you know, how great am I? And I think that's, that's a big factor. Um, yeah. People have that social kudos. And I think, you know, for me as well, um, I only leave feedback when it's really, really good or really, really bad. So as um, I've moved through my career in marketing, I've started to look at, you know, annual customer satisfaction surveys and think, mm. well, is that really a true representation? Because yeah. if I've had three experiences with a company on an annual basis, I'm going to look back to either the really, really bad experience yep. <laughs> or the really, really good experience. It's not really timely, is it? So no. it's the fact that we're doing things much quicker and, you know, we need to know now. And if I know if one of my friends asks for something on Facebook, everyone's like, bang, 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 straight away. Is yep. that also playing a role in what we're talking about here? Yeah, massively. So um, what we see is, is the timing is everything and mm. that's where brands are becoming a lot more sophisticated. Yeah. So instead of that annual survey that they, they mm. send out and say, try to remember that, and exactly as you said, you only remember the memorable yeah. ones which yeah. are going to be really bad <laughs> or really good and in the in-between you're kind of like, oh, I don't really mm. remember. So that's what kind of gets input. But people are getting a lot more sophisticated with their CRMs. Yeah. Uh, the ability to actually target at that point, there's a lot of literature written mm. on this um, I've consumed as much of it as possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it basically says, you know, for, to, to increase advocacy at its highest point, you, you need to be timely. It's, it's essentially the point where the consumer would normally say thank you mm. to you as a business. So yeah. if you've just delivered an experience, you've just delivered your service, you've delivered it well, that's where you should ask yeah. um, for that feedback and, and to, to ensure that it's going to be positive advocacy. Yeah. Or even if it's not, you know, you'll get that immediate feedback to understand what you're doing wrong to then mm. optimise rather than, 
a year later when it's it's far too yeah. late and you've probably lost that customer. Um, and also, while we're going through this, um, I just like to hear feedback from people online right now. Just type into the chat box what sort of feedback um, loop or channels do you use within your organisation and how is it working? Um, I know there might be a lot of charities and not for profits out there mm. using Facebook because it is quite um, quite a good channel for them. But you know, do you do your annual satisfaction surveys? Do you do M um, MPS or something yep. like that as well? Just some feedback in the ask a question box would be great before we move on. Um, so let's talk about WOM. Yep. Word of mouth. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, so word of mouth, as I said, it's you know it's a common theme across yep. here that it's challenging. It, Brands know that it's it's incredibly mm. important. As you said yourself, you know yep. it's your most powerful, but there, there is a lack of tracking. Um, what we saw, we used to do the customer barometer, the global customer barometer for Amex each year, and it would tell us that on average, people tell eight people about yep. a good positive experience, mostly offline uh, and for friends. But people are connected to, on average, 846 across all their social channels wow. these days. Yeah. Uh, some duplication in that, but you know the amount of contacts. So we kind of look at that as this bridge between, okay, well, if there's this positive word of mouth going on and people mm. tell eight, but they're connected to 846, there's this, there's this really big opportunity here Huge. for brands. Yeah. Um, but how do, we, how do we get that happening? How do we track it? How do we know when it's happened? Um, yeah, that, that seemed to be the missing piece mm. um, for people. I'm just on that as well. Thanks for your comments that are coming through. So Adam says their organisation uses Facebook. Uh, that's their main form of feedback at the moment. However, a lot of it is negative um, if it does come through on that channel, but mm. they do respond to it immediately, yeah. um, which I've heard that's is good. also yes. always a good thing as well. Um, and then we've also got Natasha saying that they use um, satisfaction surveys that are just three little questions after each experience, Great. straight after an experience with the organisation. So yeah. two very different forms there. Yeah, it's um, and a lot of our clients do do the same and yeah. actually utilize both and what we're seeing through whether it's CSAT or customer satisfaction surveys mm. or, or NPS um, hopefully you're, you're tracking you know how likely they are to mm. recommend because um, it's a really nice uh, truth point of yes. uh, from a customer of really on your performance if you are and they're giving you um, a good a good score mm. you know there's plenty not not just recommending there's plenty of ways to actually drive that advocacy and in, in a positive form in social so you might use Facebook you might use social, uh, or any other social channel to connect that positivity mm. to friends or review sites. Yep. Um, from a Facebook messaging, yeah, I don't think you're, you're getting around that. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that makes us accountable as marketers and, and shifting towards understanding, well, it's about the customer's mm. voice, not ours, is they now have a voice and it's yeah. very loud on social. Um, it is often, you know, as you said, you either go for the extremes, mm. positive and negative, and that's probably why people are going to your Facebook to provide these negative uh, comments. Um, we have, you know, we'll touch on it later, but our, ours is a place we're focusing on the positive. Yep, great. Um, but certainly, you know, best practices, and I'm glad to hear that you're replying to all of those mm. as well. And a lot of people here as well saying um, Amanda and Jawad's talking about um, using SurveyMonkey as the yep. tool that actually goes out to people and they actually create the survey, um, you know, in the days after the events or um, paper-based customer satisfaction surveys on the day of the event. And I Great. go to many conferences where before I hop on a seat, I have to lift it up yep. and I'm much more <laughs> inclined to fill it out then as well. Um, but at the same time, I'm on Twitter and I'm on yep. Facebook and it's like it's like an integrated approach now, isn't it? You can't Absolutely. escape it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it needs to be, as I say, we, we always talk about right time, right person, yep. right message uh, for for to get that positivity. But for all feedback, of course, you know mm. you want to be timely. You want to be there and then to get the most. You know that's when you get those little nuggets of feedback yeah. that you wouldn't have got otherwise because exactly. your memory fades. Great. Um, and just on while we're still talking about the Facebook side of things from Lisa, so mm. she uses Facebook um, but gets a higher response rate from feel good stories that aren't directly related to the organisation rather than posts that are directly related to businesses or about their service. So do you think that's still helpful in creating advocates, the fact that you're bringing them in in another way as opposed to directly yeah. marketing? Look, it's an interesting one. I think people with Facebook, it, it, it's chain. People just need to be aware mm. of what actually provides uh, engagement. Yeah. Um, we know, you know, we used to run a whole bunch of community, um, community social communities. Yep. We know that the selling message never performs well. No. Um, it, is, it is around creating those stories or those posts that people connect with. Uh, what Facebook is now the algorithm, and they, they make you know no hidden smoke mirrors around this. It is around 
creating shared content. So mm -hmm. it's not about, you actually don't get anywhere near as much traction if you create something that gets liked or uh, commented on. What Facebook's algorithm puts the priority to is where people share it because they've mm -hmm. said, well, Others, others don't necessarily care about whether my friend is liking or, or posting on a brand's mm. page. What they do care about and what they put priority to is if you share it because you, you think it's so yeah. worthwhile content that you want your friends to know about it. So that's when the higher. content gets mm. shared a lot higher. Um, so really before you post anything, um, it's all around, okay, how shareable is this content? Mm. Is this what people are going to connect with? And it's something which has polarized brands and you know, we worked on uh, for Wreck-It Van Kieser, one of the biggest advertisers mm. in, in globally, um, and just before I left there, they, they cut 70% of their social spend because wow. they went, well, we want to deliver paid uh, sales messages and, and this isn't necessarily the right channel yeah. for us. Um, so they really had to look at it and go, well, what's, what's, what's the ROI? Working? Yeah. yeah. So just on that, so we know how we can create advocates of mm -hmm. our brand now. We know it's all about shareable content. It's also all about, you know, giving pe giving back to people and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. What sort of platforms, and we'd, let's talk about Recamazing a little bit, just yep. so we can sort of distinguish between Facebook and Recamazing and yep. the other platforms available out there and put some context to what we're talking about today. Yeah. So what is it essentially? Yeah, sure. Um, so Recamazing is, is a fairly new approach um, in the sense of what our product provides, but mm. it's not a new approach as in marketing. As we've, we've all been talking about word of mouth yeah, and how yeah. powerful it yeah. is, so it's, it's not a new um, sentiment, but essentially the easiest way to explain it is we call often ourselves the digital barbecue conversation. So oh, if, catchy. <laughs> if we're, if we're, it's more an internal term. Yeah, but yeah. if we are at a barbecue and you go, Look, I really need a good mortgage broker or mm. I'm looking to get uh, a physio or I'm looking to get involved in a charity, I want to know which one. Um, now I get it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> essentially, you know, you're, you're sitting there talking to friends um, and so you'll say, you know, has anyone got a great mortgage broker? I would go, yeah, sure, Sarah, go speak to mine. They're awesome. Here's their details. Yep. So we essentially store, we're a shared location for friends to store all their favorite business recommendations. Mm. So you can go at any point and see what your friends have recommended yep. or you can ask your friend and it stores in one location against all the different categories. So essentially, you have your most trusted businesses in one place shared between your friends. Uh, and that's how it works for users. Yep. And obviously, because that happens on our site, yep. we get a lot of interesting data, we get a lot of interesting metrics, all those things we've talked about that are impossible to yeah, find about exactly. who's recommending us, how does it happen, when does it happen, why are people recommending us, all those things are um, all of a sudden they're created and you can track them as a business to really okay. understand well, what is it that we're doing? Why are people out there recommending us? What are they saying to friends mm. when they're recommending us? Is it our online service? Is it our friendly staff? Is it a specific staff mm. member? Um, so at that point for businesses, essentially we're a really simple uh, customer experience tool yep. to help you with your advocate marketing. Okay. So we allow you to really simply ask for recommendations and track when they're given. So TripAdvisor comes to mind. I think of TripAdvisor, a corporate TripAdvisor for businesses. Yep. And understand that it's similar to that. And if you could just explain the differences. But why is it so positive? I would think, you know, why can't people leave negative feedback? How, how does that all play into it? Yeah, sure. So where we distinct ourselves, because that's most often the, the first the question of, yeah. of how, how are you different to a review site? Mm. So what we saw with review sites is that because it's not your friends, yep. you, you need that volume. So you go on a review site and you, there might be 400 reviews, but mm. uh, you don't know who those people are. It, you know, it's Bob from Sacramento. You don't know him from a bar of soap. Yep. Uh, when he says he's like this hotel, you, you have to really dig in and see if that's something that resonates with you. Is yeah. this person like you? Do I actually? Who would, are they? Yeah, who <laughs> are these people? Um, so, but look, it's incredibly effective. Mm. And, and don't get me wrong, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's a channel you shouldn't use. It, it is. You know, they've done studies on uh, an extra star on Yelp equates to 9% increase in revenue, mm. for instance. So incredibly important. However, what we've seen is the missing piece is, is that friend and that, that word of mouth mm. recommendation between friends, which the studies all tell us that it's far more effective. If I can get, I've got 400 reviews from randoms or I've got one good friend actually saying you should use this business. I'm going to go with my friend. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to go at least consider that. You yes. know, at least that's in my consideration set. So very different um, as far as the normal need to look at volume compared to just one. All I need is mm. one friend recommendation to shorten my consideration set. 
The other thing that's different, and you touched on before, it's, it's the positive. Yep. Uh, it's not the negative. And the, and the reason why we do that is because our, our whole mission is to mirror how word of mouth naturally happens mm. already. So that barbecue conversation we're talking yeah. about, you say, does anyone know a good mortgage broker? Or what you see on Facebook where friends say, and it happens almost every day on my feed, hey, can anyone recommend a good accountant, a good mm. physio, whatever it might be? Uh, they don't also say, and can you tell me all the bad ones? Yeah. Um, because True. you don't need that. Yeah. You don't need that information um, because it's between friends. And so if they just say, no, I trust this one, do it, great, that's all I need. That makes my whole journey mm. a lot shorter. So we are literally about storing those great businesses for friends. So how do we get involved in this? Is it a page that people go to um, for businesses and just for people? I'm, so, I'm yeah. guessing it's two separate yeah, areas Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as a user, if I want to just go on and start storing my favourite businesses with friends, mm -hmm. um, you go to recamazing.com, you log in via Facebook. You know, we're, we're not about creating a new social network. Mm. There's plenty of others out there yeah, that yeah. do that. Too many passwords. <laughs> exactly. So you, you log in via Facebook. Facebook, we pull in all your friends in one place and you can start storing your favorite businesses. You can invite your friends to join. You can ask your friends to provide their favorite businesses in the categories you need if you need a reco. Um, and so it all works very simply and, and hopefully it, it's quite intuitive. Please mm. let me know if it's not. Yeah. Um, and, but from a business side, you go to recamazing.com slash business or you'll see the prompt on there uh, for business owners. And essentially you register a profile. Mm. Uh, really simple. It, it's like a business card. So it's just Red back, here's our, here's our um, web address and yep. here's how to get in contact. That's all you need because it's the same as that barbecue conversation of yeah. here you go, go speak here's to Red back. Card, yep. um, and so it, it takes two minutes to register. We're then not about creating content and ongoing content creation. We know that's incredibly uh, time consuming yeah. and, and costly. So you literally register your profile. You then ask your own customers to recommend you to their social contacts. Ah, so it's like a campaign then, saying, yes. hey guys, we've got this um, channel set up, it'd be great if you can recommend us. Absolutely. Wow. So you essentially, it allows you to extract everything we've talked about of mm. those advocates out there who are out there recommending you, you, you essentially ask them to recommend mm. you and you ask them to say, hey, if you've had a great experience with us, Please let your friends know about us and store that recommendation and recommending for your Facebook friends to find mm. when they need a good business. Okay. Um, so instead of it disappearing up the news feed and mm. when you're asking for a recommendation, it might post to Facebook and disappear. Um, we store it permanently and recommending, and then we also have the ability to share it on Facebook and Twitter as well. So you so get the post. So much sharing happening right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, sharing's caring. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the big difference for us is that it's permanently there. Yeah. So even a year later, if you've gone and, and recommended a great designer or a design agency, I can go, oh, great. I can go on here, search design agency, and see that you've recommended that. Fantastic. I don't have to go out there and spend days mm. looking for it. I can put that in my consideration set and make my journey a lot quicker finding a good business. So is your goal, and be mindful, uh, I'm very mindful of the fact that you, you started this business 18 months ago, you mm. said in your second bedroom, so congratulations yep. <laughs> on that. Um, but is your goal eventually to have everyone have, that everyone will have a recommending profile? Yeah, look, that, you know, it's a very lofty goal. Maybe not everyone, your, just 90%. Your very audacious goal. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, our, our goal, and you know, whilst this has been bubbling away for 18 months, we, mm. we launched uh, to consumers in September. So yep. that, that's how long a platform like this takes to yeah. pull together. We're really fortunate in that we've had you know, category leading brands on board, driving advocacy. Yeah. So we work with Virgin, we work with the Open Colleges, we work with Peter Warren Automotive, we work with a whole bunch of charity mm. clients. Uh, we received funding in December from investment backing, so right. it's a big milestone for us to actually um, you know, drive even more value for our clients mm. and for our users. But our goal, yeah, absolutely, right now, um, it, the focus is on helping businesses grow and, mm. and businesses who find word of mouth drives their business already and yep. are generally creating good customer experience. They're the ones who are going to find the most value out of it. Uh, and from a user perspective, we know, you know, we know they're looking for recommendations. We know at this mm. moment the stats are 50% of all sales are uh, um, influenced by word of mouth. Mm. So we know it's happening. We see it on Facebook all the time. We're just providing a better solution for it to be stored. Um, so yes, our goal is everyone to use yes. it. Probably right now it's you know, to get those people who are socially savvy, the ones who really believe in advocacy, mm. uh, and they're the brands that we've partnered with. So how much does this cost? 
Yeah. If someone wants to hop online and do it now, and I believe not for profits and charities, uh, there's a deal or something. Yeah, like. absolutely. So look, our big brand partners like the Virgin, who, who you know have the agencies, who have the analytics, kind of analysts looking at data and, and understand their leads and advocates. That's three grand a month um, in six month subscriptions. But we do have a small, medium size mm. business profile, which you don't get all the analytics and kind of forever, but you do get access to some, um, and you do get to drive recommendations still, and that's sixty five bucks per mm. month and right now is actually a, a free trial um, but then as you said the the charities and if you're a registered charity or not-for-profit uh, you actually get access to the platinum ones so the ones that our big brands use which is typically 36 grand a year it's free um, oh, so there you go. that's part of our giving back culture yeah. uh, that we have at Wreck Amazing we, we we're kind of very proud of that yeah. um, and so we don't want to make money off charities so if you're a charity yeah. go and utilize it because it's very valuable I just yeah I just was my I don't usually like bringing up anything sort of salesy in these events but I do know that we've got a lot of not-for-profits and charities online at the moment so I yeah. um, just wanted to make sure that you guys know that you do have access to these sorts of platforms for free um, and you know if you do have people wanting to use these platforms or even driving advocacy in general what are your recommendations because I'm thinking it's a lot more than just sending out a blast email saying you Absolutely. like us recommend us how do you do it how do you do it effectively yeah so it comes back to that that really mantra that we have around right person right time right mm. message um, and you know, we talked about before it, it sounds like some of our watches are actually already doing customer satisfaction surveys so the way clients do it if they've given you a positive rating yep. said fantastic to hear you've had a great experience mm. with us and you drop down the next question is please recommend us to your friends yeah. so they can find us when they have looking for a good business um, so that's a perfect example of yep you've already established who your advocate is and then you ask the recommendation other clients you know open colleges look at it as okay you've just graduated yes. um, from your online education and the teacher sends out we hope